Hello and welcome to the Find Your Feminine Fire podcast. I am your host, Amanda Testa. I am a sex, love, and relationship coach. And in this podcast, my guests and I talk sex, love, and relationships and everything that lights you up from the inside out. Welcome. Hello there, it is Amanda here, and welcome to this week's podcast. So I was just on a trip driving through the deliciously beautiful Colorado mountains and fall, and was on my way to a girl's weekend in Salida, and to entertain myself, I started listening to a podcast with one of my favorite superheroes of sex education, Dr. Emily Nagoski. You've probably heard her here on the podcast. She's been on a few episodes, and she is amazing. So she was just on an episode with Glennon Glennon Doyle and Abby Wambach and their podcast, I think it's called We Can Do Hard Things. Anyways, um, I just loved this episode because it just really re-inspired me as to how important this work is. And, you know, first of all, something that I really realize is that, you know, as people socialized as women here, and especially in the US, we just have a couple things that we have to deal with, right? And I'm going to go through, there's basically four that I want to go through. And, you know, I think that something that always just stands out to me, because after being in this world for so long and doing this world work for so long, it's easy to forget how many people um, don't even understand how our bodies work, right? Right. We, number one, we've never been taught about our bodies. We've never been taught about pleasure-based sex ed, most of us, right? We've never been taught about our anatomy. We've never been taught about what desire really looks like and what it means and really kind of understanding the nuances there. So often we're just, you know, we think something's wrong with us or that we're not normal or that we should just magically know these things, which none of that is true. Not to mention, we live in a patriarchal society where oftentimes women are pleasers, right? We are pleasers. We say no to ourselves so that others can benefit often. And especially this comes up a lot in relationships and sex. And, um, you know, it's just something that we can actually learn more about our bodies. And this is, I think, one of the first steps that it, it takes to kind of really feel this wholeness and acceptance and embracing of your body exactly as it is, is learning more about your body, learning more about your anatomy, right? Um, The second thing is that we have tons of shame. We have tons of shame. And this can be from numerous reasons, right? And oftentimes shame can manifest as disinterest, um, painful sex, um, you know, not wanting to have sex, because I, honestly, if you're not having good sex, why would you want it? Your body is not going to want something that you don't enjoy. So it would make perfect sense that you don't want to have sex if you don't enjoy it. Um, no one wants bad sex. And um, this really stands in the way. The third thing is trauma. And sadly, you know, so many of us have experienced this. Um, the fourth thing is not knowing what to do, right? Right. You maybe want to explore this area, but you don't even know the steps to take. And so hopefully in this episode, I'm going to just break down a few of these and give you a little more, give you a little more understanding of where to go. If you want to feel more whole in your body and your sexuality, if you want to enjoy sex, and if you desire a more deep connection with your body, with your sexuality, with your partner, because honestly, Not everyone wants it, and that's okay if you don't. But if you are someone who does, then this is for you because it is a natural part of being a human being. Sex is a natural part of being a human. And while it might be a natural part, it doesn't mean that we know exactly how to do it and how to enjoy it and how to work through all the things that come up along the way. So back to the first thing um, that we're never taught about our bodies. I am a very well-educated woman, right? I went to college. I have a lot of education. And until I started doing this work, um, there's a lot I didn't know, right? And I remember in my early 30s reading a book called The Women's Anatomy of Arousal by Sherry Winston. 
She's been on the podcast before too. It's an awesome episode if you want to kind of get the close note version of that book. But really, it's around your body and your anatomy and understanding it and how we're not even taught often the proper anatomy. And this can bring up a whole lot of controversy because there is a lot of things that change even in the medical books, right? Things that were in the medical books that get taken out and just like so much misunderstanding around women's anatomy and sexuality. So it you have to take it upon yourself to learn if you have desire to. And the more you learn and see what's normal, the more you realize that you are normal. And I think that's the number one thing that people want to know. Am I normal? Does my vulva look normal? Does my body look normal? And the answer is yes. And I think, you know, if you have only been exposed to porn or other things that might not be an accurate representation of our human bodies, then of course, you're not going to think what you have is normal. Because let me just give you a little um, education here is that most porn is digitally remastered, right? So they go in and they change the look of things. They change the look of things, which is why that this is a very sad statistic that one of the number one up and coming plastic surgeries is a labiaplasty. And even girls as young as nine years old are requesting this. Can I just repeat that? How fucked up that is, excuse my language, but it is right. The medical profession finds these loopholes of how to make women feel bad about themselves and takes advantage of it. All right. I'm just going to leave it there, but I have a very strong opinion around this and granted, whatever you choose to do is fine, right? It's your body, but let me just assure you that you're normal. If you have longer inner labia than atalabia, you're normal. If you have a really long um, vaginal lips, you're normal. And I just think that this is such an important thing. So you can check out the vulva gallery. You can go and look at different vulvas and realize, okay, these are what normal vulvas look like. There's a great book that I got called Petals. It has a documentary along with it just around, you know, just like every flower is unique, so is every vulva. And I know some of this might be rudimentary for those of you who have been following me for a while, but I just am struck about how many people don't know these things. And so I just want to reiterate all these important things, okay? Because these are just starting points. And I know people can be really afraid to even notice their own bodies or look at their own bodies, right? You know, when you have a, a small child, one of the things I often say is so important is just teaching the proper anatomy from a young age, right? It's no different. Here's your knee. Here's your clitoris. Here's your nose. Here's your vulva. Here's your elbow. Here's your anus, right? These are just normal parts of our body. Unfortunately, a lot of us have had shame around those parts or maybe never even really learned to name them. So we might have a harder time talking to our children about them. And so if you find yourself feeling things come up, this is when it can be helpful to reach out to a professional, work with someone like myself who can help you work through those things. But you know, because really just teaching your kids from a young age about their body, number one, helps them realize that there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing to be ashamed of about our bodies. There are bodies, right? We all have them. They all have functions. They're all part every part of our body is important and explaining the parts of those, right? Um, I think age appropriate information is just great. And while I am not the expert in that, um, there are some great resources out there. One of the, so just know there's great information out there. Um, one of the women who, or excuse me, one of the people who Emily Nagoski recommends, um, around talking to your kids about sex is, uh, Corey, I think it's Corey Silverman. I'll have to double check and I'll make sure to put it in the snow note, show notes, but I will look that up um, if for talking to your kids around sex. And that's a whole nother, a whole nother episode, a whole nother plenty of information there, but um, really just learning where you didn't learn things and how you can now you can always learn more, right? You're never too old. It's never too late. So learning about your body, learning about your anatomy. Um, and this is a big part of it is just becoming familiar with what you have right? Okay. Number two, the shame. Let's talk about this. We have so much shame often because of how we were raised, because perhaps of trauma, because of religious conditioning, because of the culture that we live in, because America is, you know, founded on Puritans, right? <laughs> so just understanding that too. Um, understanding that and I mean, if you just think about how much of uh, the marketing in the U.S. is 
designed to make you question if you're good enough, right? If you have curly hair, you should should straighten it. If you have straight hair, you should curl it. If you have a big butt, it should be smaller. If you have a small butt, it should be bigger. Not to mention the, the narrative that there's only one right supposed body that you should be looking like, you know, which is such BS. So I just want to right now, just let you know that if you're feeling any of these things, it's because that's how we're conditioned. That's how we're taught as women. Oh, you need to wear makeup. Oh, you need to look like this. Oh, you need to do that. You're not going to be good enough unless you do this, that, and the other, right? It's, it's constantly bombarding us from every direction. Even if you consciously don't watch TV or don't look at the news or don't look at your, um, at the women's fashion magazines, you can't help it, right? You go to check out in the grocery store and there you have it. I love how Emily Nagoski talk, calls this um, bikini industry complex, right? It's like, there's this only one specific like golden um, body type, color, size, shape that it's supposed to be, which is a bunch of BS, right? And um, I really love Sonia Renee Taylor's book, The Body is Not Apology. Such a good one. I highly recommend. Um, Around how, you know, just really embracing yourself exactly as you are. Um, And not just from like, a self-love standpoint and where you're going to take care of yourself, but from just like radically appreciating and loving who you are. Um, But anyway, so the shame often can show up, right? We're, we're ashamed of our bodies. We're ashamed of how we maybe look in sex. We're ashamed of how we can't speak up for ourselves, or maybe that we feel too much. And so we dumb it down, or maybe that we, you know, have faked orgasms for so many years. We're afraid to ask for what you want now, or maybe that you've been doing something a certain way and you might want to try something different and you can't speak up about it, right? I talked about this on the podcast a few weeks ago um, with Kasia Urbaniak, who is amazing. And she was talking about the freeze is what she calls it. When women, powerful women, any kind of woman um, goes to, gets into an experience and they just freeze, like no words come out. And this can happen in sex so often too, right? Where you perhaps don't speak up for your needs or you say yes, when your body means really is a no because of societal conditioning, because you think you need to please someone or because you, you know, feel like, I I think this was, they were talking about on the podcast with Glenn and um, her sister, Amanda, around how she viewed sex as like an oil change, a maintenance thing that you had to do to keep your partner happy. This is all the things that we're taught. So it's no wonder that we struggle in this area, right? It's no wonder that there's so many people that struggle. This is why, Um, it sometimes takes a deeper support to kind of work through these issues because they are deeply rooted. And, you know, one of the reasons that so many women, one in three have painful sex is because of all these things going on, because of all these things that are keeping us from being in our bodies or from truly embracing ourselves or taking all the time we need and taking up all the space we need to be able to have the pleasure that we, is our birthright, right? All right, now I'm going to move on to trauma. And I just will just, just say that, you know, it's unfortunate in our culture that so many women have experienced some type of sexual trauma. And this also is something that needs to be addressed with a professional, a therapist, um, you know, reaching out to those that can support you as you integrate the bigger things. And um, this is something that, you know, even if you feel like it's not something you can move past, I assure you that reblooming after trauma is possible for every person that desires it. And I love one of my mentors, Rachel Maddox, I'm a certified rebloom trauma resolution coach as well, really talks about that ability to reconnect to that blueprint of help at your core, um, your original essence, whatever you want to call it, but there's nothing that can touch that. Nothing can touch our original essence. And the more we strengthen that blueprint of health inside us, the more it feels safe to to expand. And yes, that takes work sometimes and all the different layers that go there, but it is possible. And one of the things I love is when I'm able to work with clients and they're able to reconnect to that again, to find pleasure for pleasure's sake for themselves without guilt, without shame, without the vulnerability hangover afterwards. Um, okay. And number four is we don't know what to do about it, right? We don't know what to do. And I think that this is why it's so important to kind of have a road that has been traveled. So, you know, 
right? There's some books that are so good if, if you want to start this. Like Emily Nagoski's Come As You Are is such a great book. Like I mentioned earlier, Sherry Winston, The Women's Anatomy of Arousal is such a great book. I also love Mama Gina and all that she does for empowering women. Um, she has a great book called Pussy. Like I mentioned, Sonia Renee Taylor, The Body is Not Apology. There are so many great um, people doing amazing work in this genre, as well as myself. Um, but really, you know, it goes back to kind of looking back at what you've been taught around your life, like rewriting your sexual, your own sexual story, learning how to integrate these pieces that come up like the shame and the guilt and the fear and the, you know, also working physiologically with your body to kind of understand why there might be pain or to work with your pelvic floor to ensure that it's healthy, to um, create a new relationship to your own body and your own pleasure. And also learning the tools, right? Learning the tools to become a sexual superstar, so to speak, and um, really expanding your connection with your own self, with your own sexuality, and how this expands into your relationships. You know, I think it's so beautiful how sacred sexuality can be such a healing elixir for yourself, for couples, because there's such acceptance, there's such radical self-love in that. And realizing that Sex doesn't have to be something that's dirty or wrong or bad or shameful or a have to do or a maintenance thing or something that you don't enjoy. It's turning it into a way to honor yourself, to celebrate your own body, to celebrate your own pleasure. And if you choose to involve someone else in your sexuality, to expand that connection and to really honor the intersection of both of you coming together. So I really just wanted to kind of record these thoughts because just want to normalize what so many go through to normalize that, you know, it's often so normal for couples to struggle. It's, it's so normal for women to feel shame. It's so normal for, you know, there to be often um, mismatched desire levels and different ways people come together sexually. This is why there's so many great tools out there to kind of work to find ways back together. And so I hopefully you've gotten some good little starting points here. And if you, this is something you want to explore further, please reach out. Um, there's always, there's always hope and there's always things you can do to have a more gratifying and pleasurable existence because it's more than just sex, right? It's more than just sexual pleasure. It is really feeling good in your body, feeling that you are worthy and deserving of all the things that you want in life and feeling the energy to be able to take the action to make those things happen. And also trusting and honoring and surrendering to your own journey because everyone's different. Everyone's timeline's different. Everyone's journey is different. And they're all beautiful and, and worthwhile. So thank you for tuning in and we will look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you so much for listening to the Find Your Feminine Fire podcast. This is your host, Amanda Testa. And if you have felt a calling while listening to this podcast to take this work to a deeper level, this is your golden invitation. I invite you to reach out. You can contact me at amandatesta.com slash activate. And we can have a heart to heart to discuss more about how this work can transform your life. You can also join us on Facebook and the group Find Your Feminine Fire group. And if you've enjoyed this podcast, please share with your friends. Go to iTunes and give me a five-star rating and a raving review so I can connect with other amazing listeners like yourself. Thank you so much for being a part of the community.